Uh, so I'm going to be talking to you today uh, about what I, what I like to call a new paradigm for performance tuning in SQL Server 2016. Um, so slow queries, who's, who's got them? So I'm, I'm guessing pretty much everybody out there has to deal with these, whether you're a developer or a DBA, at some point all of us have to deal with slow queries. We also have to deal with things like inconsistent performance, queries that, that run good sometimes and doesn't run good at other times. Uh, one of the classic situations as a DBA that we get all the time is, hey, this ran slow at 2 a.m. last night. What happened at, at that time? And it's very difficult, um, unless we got you know some extensive monitoring in place, it's very difficult to figure out you know what happened in the past because um, we can't just go and look at the server to uh, see what was going on at that time. Um, <clears throat> now the issue is we have query plans for the same query that keep changing. You know, we we may get a uh, table scan one time and it runs slow. The next time we get a cluster index seek and it runs fast, and it can be it can be very challenging to dig into those plans and try to figure out why it, it chooses one plan or another at different times. Fortunately for us, they've um, introduced some great tools for us for performance tuning in SQL Server 2016. And I'm going to talk about just two of those today. Um, one is called the Query Store and the other is called the Plan Compare Tool. Now specifically about the Query Store, um, it actively tracks query plans and query performance um, in your server as it's running. It identifies query plan regressions and performance inconsistencies for you. And, and it can, it's, it's also going to be kind of a replacement for the old process of using plan guides. Um, and it's much, much simpler now when, you've, when you have a query that has uh, the plan keeps changing a lot and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. If you have a plan that you know will always be good, you can easily just, with a couple of clicks, force it and it will always use that plan for that query. And if the plan stops performing well, um, you know, because your data changes over time, uh, the, the shape of the query will change over time and so what, what is a great plan today may not be a great plan a week from now. Um, so if you find that it does start performing badly, it's just as easily to unforce that query plan with just a couple quicks, clicks. It really is as simple as that. And the other tool I'm going to talk about is the plan compare tool. Now the plan compare tool um, allows you to compare plan properties side by side. Um, normally if we want to compare uh, two versions of a query um, compare the plans, what we have to do is we create two different versions of the query and usually I use like index hints or something to force one of the queries to, to perform in a specific way and, and then I can perform some manual comparisons between the two. Um, this tool actually does some stuff automatically for you. You can use an actual plan that you've just generated. You can use cache plans. Um, and you can compare two of them in the window. You don't have to run the queries at the same time. I can save one of the plans and run a different version of the query and then compare those two. And it gives me the properties of the specific nodes I'm looking at uh, side by side so that I can easily identify differences uh, where there are differences. Um, it also does um, identifies matching operations for you uh, so you can easily compare, find which nodes match up. Because it a lot of times the plans will be shaped completely different and so if they're vastly different it can be difficult to find out, okay, um, especially for a large plan, what, what nodes match up to which. Um, so this does that for you and helps you identify those nodes that match up. And it is color coded so it it, it makes it easier to identify those codes. And this screenshot is actually from an older version of uh, 
the SSMS. Um, so it'll look a little bit different when we do the demo, but it is still color coded. And uh, syncs the plans and the nodes. You want to compare so that you can uh, compare them in the graphical view and the properties boxes. And that's really all I'm going to uh, going to go through the slide deck for today. I'm going to spend the rest of the time uh, doing demo. So let's jump into that. So I've got a, I'm running the RC3 of SQL Server 2016 on my laptop. And I'm first thing I want to do is uh, query store is disabled by default. Um, and it is separate in each database. Uh, so you can enable it in each database. You can enable it in only one database or only the ones you care about. Um, so it's very selective. You know, it's not all or nothing. So I, I'm for for today. I'm I'm only going to be concerned with one database. I'm going to turn it on in my AdventureWorks 2016 database. Now in Object Explorer, when I expand um, expand the node for the database, I don't see anything right away. Um, but if I look at the properties of the database, there is a in the navigation there's a new tab called Query Store, and you won't hear me talk positively about the GUI very often, um, but they actually gave us some really good tooling uh, for the Query Store um, in the GUI for for SQL 2016. <clears throat> now, one thing to note is it does use disk space within that database. So you will you will need to consider that the amount of space you're, you're storing performance data will be part of your database. By default, um, that space is very small. Um, and you can very easily look at it. Um, as you can see on here, it gives you some graphs showing you how much disk space it's using. Um, so it's very easy to do. So the, the first thing I'd like to point out on the GUI here is the operation mode. There's it shows you actual versus requested, and there's and, it, and there's a scenario where this is very important. Now to enable it, I can just change operation mode to read write. So read write mode means that it, I can query the query store, and it is actively um, tracking queries and query plans in the in the store. Read only mode means that I can still query the query store, it's still there, still available to look at the data, but it's no longer actively query, uh, tracking any data. Um, so the reason that it shows you actual versus requested is there are scenarios where uh, the query store could stop collecting um, information and could transition to the read-only mode. Um, so if I were to check read write right now and click OK, then and then go back to this page in the GUI, we'll see that uh, the actual mode um, is the same as the requested mode. Um, so this is this is what we want to see. Um, if, for example, your query store runs out of disk space, so as we see, as we can see here. Query store retention, it's by default, it's limited to using only 100 megabytes of space. If I fill that space up and it can and it can no longer store any more data, um, it won't get errors and it won't cause queries to fail because it can't track them. Um, instead, what it will do is it will change the operation mode from read write to read only. Um, so if you find that new information isn't showing up. This is one of the first things I would check. Um, if you see that actual operation mode was read write or is read only, and the requested mode is read write, um, then it has transitioned to read only because of some problem. Most likely the disk space. So that would be the first thing to look at. If you if you are out of space, there are some system procedures you can use to selectively clear out uh, some data. You can also just write down here, if you decide, okay, I, I just want to get rid of all the old data, you can click this button to purge the query data, and it'll dump all the old data. And you can change the request and mode back to read, write, write, and, 
and you're back in business. Um, so most of the um, options you see in here are things that I'm probably you know out of the box when I set this up in my production systems I'm probably not going to mess with those I'm just going to leave them at the default values um, one thing I may change right out of the box um, is if I'm putting it on a very busy production server and I know it's going to generate a, a lot of uh, capture data I'm probably going to go ahead and bump up this max size to some larger value um, so like right now I'm just going to set it to a thousand megabytes, approximately a gig, not quite, but almost a gig. Um, and in production, I'm probably not going to change the data flush interval, um, but it, it is in, you know, in minutes. And for the purposes of this demo, uh, I want to uh, bump this up. I'm going to bump that up to an out to one minute. And I'm also going to put the collection interval at one minute because, you know, I'm going to be doing some stuff and I want to see the collected data fairly, fairly quickly here. Um, so I'm bumping those up. But in production, I'm probably not going to bump those up right away. Um, if I see that things are getting um, missed, I may bump those up in production um, after, it's been, after, um, after it's run for a while and I, I see that I need to. Just out of the box, I'm not going to change those in my production server. So now I've, I've got it running. I've got it collecting data. If I refresh the database node here, we see now that there's a new node that appears on the database called Query Store. Um, if we expand that node, we can see that they give us some views in here right out of the box that we can click on and see. and we can see I've already got some some information in here and if we see the queries down here you can say okay clearly those are system processes running in the background so I can see that information I can see that there's already some information in there I can tell what kind of inf information is giving me if I click back on this one we can we can see what that query plan for when that ran was we can see over here okay here's the uh, plan ID. If this query has had multiple plans, um, let's say this is if this ran again and it got a recompiled and got a different query plan, we would see a second dot over here, and we could, and from this view we could click on one of the dots to view the different plans, and then if we decided that you know hey this one plan is really good and much better than the other, I go then. To force that plan, you know, just click on the one I want to force, and then just come right here and click force uh, this plan, and then from that moment on, that that query um, will use always use that plan. It work, and this is very this is an, an analogous to the plan guides that we've been using for many many years, except much 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 easier. And and then again, if it's not performing well. Or was or was questionable. I could always come over here and uh, find that plan ID again and click unforce the plan. Uh, so very very easy work. So let's go ahead and generate um, some activity to have a look at. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my demo environment is reset. Make sure uh, we're doing some stuff with the cardinality estimator. Um, for this query uh, to force it to generate different plans. So I'm going to make sure that that uh, trace flag is, is turned off for the first iteration. And so then I'm just going to run this query that I wrote. And as you can see, I'm using uh, functions to compare different, uh, on, on the columns to compare them and, you know, forcing it to Given a lot of opportunity to make bad choices, um, functions on columns um, makes it very hard for the cardinality estimator to figure out a a uh, good estimate uh, and a good plan. So I'm just going to run this query with the cardinality estimator that was as introduced in SQL Server 2014. 
Um, now I'm going to run it again, and this time I'm going to enable trace flag 9481 that reverts the cardinality estimator to the old version and has it, uh, uh, it, it will force it to use the uh, cardinality estimator from SQL 2012 and earlier. Then I will just execute the same query again and we should get a different plan and a different result. Okay, so we've generated it with uh, with the other plan, and I'm going to go ahead and disable that trace flag. So now let's let's come back over to our query store, and let's take a look at our uh, top resource consumers view. And right away we see, okay, we got this this query here that's a that's a big, big resource consumer. And we look and we click on the, the graph here to show it. And yep, sure enough, that's the query I was just running. And if we look over here at our uh, graph for our plan guides, you can see there are two, uh, there are two pl diff plans that were generated. Um, I can click on any one of them to switch between the plans. So, uh, and actually down, if we look down here, we can see the plans look, uh, oh great. SMS, don't crash on me. Okay, so let's get that going again. Perfect time for an SMS crash. There we go. Open our database back up. Put our queries back on this instance. Okay, so let's come back here to the, we were looking at the uh, top resource consumers view. And let me close that. Okay, so we were looking at this, we can see, you know, we have two plans here, uh, two versions of the plan. They look very similar. Um, if just by looking, looking at it, um, right away I'm not seeing like big differences between the two. Um, but if I if I wanted to, I, this I can see this one used a lot less. Plan ID 31 used a lot less resources than plan than uh, the other. Oh, actually, and actually, it did use the same plan, um, but the the difference. So in this case, it, the plan is the same because you can see there's one plan ID 31 and 31, but you can see that they use different amounts of resources. Um, even though the plan was the same. So the other one reused the, the same plan, um, but it ran a lot longer. Um, so this identifies, if I wanted to force this plan, um, you know, I've got it selected, I can click force plan, and it'll ask me, are you sure you want to force plan 31 for query 30? Say yes, and now any other iteration of this query that I run will use this plan. And, and you can see on here, it's got a little check mark on it now indicating that it's forced. Um, so it's very easy to tell if you had a bunch of dots on here um, with a bunch of different plans, it would be very easy to tell um, that which, which of the plans was the forced one. Um, and I can just click on it and then if I decide I want to unforce that plan, I can just click unforce. It will ask for confirmation and I can unforce that plan. Um, so this really gives me a great way to proactively, um, I can proactively identify um, these poor, poor performing queries or queries that have inconsistent performance um, just by coming in here. Um, this view, as we can see, it sorts it by the top resource consumers. So you say, in, in this case, we clearly we looked at the 
the one with, that used the most resources, and and we we can see all the different iterations of it that it, that it has saved. Um, so it's it, it's it gives us a very proactive right, uh, way to look at the data. We can come in here and we and we can see okay exactly what time these queries ran too. So if like I said, somebody says, oh, oh it ran really slow at 2 a.m., um, and I could, my, my coming in here, my graph would would be different time spans, and I would look at the 2 a.m., find the um, iteration of that. I could click on that dot for the one that ran at 2 a.m. I could see what the plan was. I could, I could see how much resources it used, and it could really give me a ton of detail just from using the GUI. Um, other views is um, there are different ways to track queries in Query Store. Um, the way I set it up uh, and the default method is it will, when I enable Query Store, it will just track all queries that, that I'm executing. But you could also tell it um, to only track specific queries. So if we were to come back in here to the Properties tab, go to the query store, we can see that one of the options in here um, uh, where was that option? Query store capture mode. Um, by default it captures all of them and um, you can set it to auto and it can, uh, it can uh, instead of capturing all queries it can uh, capture queries based on resource consumption, um, and so that way, you, it, you, if you only want to know about the ones that are using a, uh, a fair amount of resources, you can set the capture mode to auto, and it'll only capture capture the ones that it that it, it feels need um, needs to uh, that exceeds some threshold. Um, you can also um, if you're in, if you have if if you're if you set it to none um, by default it won't capture anything. However, you can then tell it to to track certain queries. Now there are, there are system procedures you can run and you can tell it to okay I, want, I only want to track specific queries. So if I like if I knew this one was bad, uh, particularly troublesome query, I could track just this query. And if I'm tracking just that query, um, I could use this view for track queries, and it will only show me um, information about the queries that I'm specifically telling it to track this query. Um, currently, I'm not currently tracking any queries, um, so I'm not going to see any view and in, in any information in there right away. But um, that gives you another way you can track. You don't have to. Uh, so you can control the amount of work that your query store does. Um, the, in, the, in my experience so far, the overhead of query store um, has been fairly low. Um, but if you do see that it's causing um, a significant amount of overhead, you may want to change that operating mode to auto or maybe change it to off if you're only interested in specific queries. Um, and of course, there's also you know the overall resource consumers, um, which it'll show you, you know how much what the overall resource usage is, which you know on my laptop that's not much right now. Uh, regress queries. This will show you queries that um, where the performance is uh, goes from being good to being bad. So it's it, it'll show you queries that uh, the performance is is changing uh, drastically on. Um, but we're not limited to just what is in those views. So they do give us some views out of the box, but there's a lot more data in that database other than just what's in those views. And I actually just closed that query window, so let me open that up again. I'm going to look at, I've written already a few queries for finding that information out. Um, so for example, one of the queries that I may use is I say, okay, what's my 10 queries that had the longest execution time in the last day? So this this is tracking all the time 
that these executions um, occur. So I can I, I can do a lot of things to say to limit it to only the last day or the last hour or whatever uh, time frame I want. Now one thing to bear in mind is these uh, execution times in the query store, um, like for example in this query store we're looking at the um, last execution time uh, from the new system view sys.querystore runtime stats. Uh, so that's actual, it's capturing actual runtime stats for me. I, to see runtime stats uh, prior to SQL 2016, I have to actually get the query and run it myself to see what those runtime stats are. This is actually capturing runtime stats for me. Um, so, but these date time fields that are in the query store DMVs are stored in UTC time. Um, so when you query this, you need to understand that um, these dates are UTC. Um, so to see them in your local time, so for example, I want to see 2 a.m. my time, I'm going to have to convert the time uh, from UTC to my local time to be able to identify the correct range. So that's what I'm doing in these queries here. Um, I'm saying where the, um, the last execution time is 24 hours from, and note I'm using get UTC date instead of get date because it's, again, it's in UTC time. And then for the display, I'm actually saying, okay, calculate the difference between get date and get UTC date in minutes, and then uh, subtract that number of minutes from um, that time to display it in, in my local time. So if I just run this query, and it, it'll give me the top 10 queries um, with the highest, uh, um, longest execution time. And we can see, you know, it shows us what the average duration is. I've got this uh, SQL text right here. Obviously, my two with the longest are the two versions of that query that I ran. And you can see what the difference between those durations are. And you can see the query ID. Uh, the ID for the query text and the plan ID and the last execution time. Um, if I wanted to, another column I could very easily add to this query. Um, in the um, query store, I am joining to the system view query store plan. So it does capture those um, cache query plans for you as well. So if I wanna, wanted to, I could just add uh, the query plan here, and and it would also give me that uh, query that query plan as well in the output. Uh, um, so it gives me the XML. It's not. It's actually an in varchar format, so it's not going to. Um, so I can't just click on it and view the plan at this point. So I can change p.querypLan and cast it as XML. Now there is, I, I have one thing I've run into with doing this and is sometimes uh, there are limits to the size of the query plan. It's limited to uh, 127 nodes, and I've actually been running into this limit um, on a production system where I've been testing this um, quite a bit. Um, no problem here today. These these all converted fine. But once I've converted it to XML, I can just then click on the XML, and it'll open up the graphical plan for me, and I can very easily look at that plan. close that out. Um, so, and, and I just learned, and I just discovered this this past week with the um, failures casting that as XML. Um, so instead, I could use try, con try convert. Um, and convert it to XML. And and this is a much safer way, um, and this is new T-SQL that was introduced in, not, it, it's already in uh, current SQL Server, but it was introduced not too long ago. Um, 
and the way this works is it will attempt to convert it to that format and if it if it can it'll do it if for some reason there's some problem and it's not able to convert in that format it'll return null uh, for that value rather than throwing an error so in this case I would use try convert on these because I do I have discovered that it will fail on converting that to XML um, a good amount of time so let's take a look at some of the other queries that I've written uh, the next query is top 10 queries with most IO consumption so let's say we're having a lot of IO contention and I want to see okay which queries are causing my IO contention um, and so this one I'm I'm also looking at just the last 24 hours, so I'm doing it where it's with the start time of the query um, in the sys.query store runtime stats interval, where the start time is greater than the last uh, 24 hours ago. So I say, okay, here's my top I/O consuming queries, and you know this is my laptop where I do demos so I don't actually have a lot of um, IO intensive queries running on here um, that I and I just and I just enabled query store um, like 20 minutes ago so I don't have a lot of information in here yet um, but if, if this was a production system I would be able to see you know what's the average IO that this query is doing gives me the tech the text and the query ID and plan ID and the runtime stats ID so I can look up additional information if I choose to. Um, the start and end time for the in tracking interval. Um, and it tells me what the average row count is and the um, number of times it's been executed. So, you know, I can see, you know, on average what, what's the amount of I.O. it's done. I say, okay, and it's been executed this many times, so if I multiply the number of executions times the average I.O., it'll, it'll show me what the total I.O. was. Um, so the one, and I can also, I can sort it by, okay, what's getting the most rows so I can s figure out which developer is not using where clauses on the queries and is just returning all the rows from the table, and I can go yell at them for doing that. And the next query I've written is queries where duration increased by more than double in the last 48 hours. Um, so what I'm doing with this one is I'm, I'm actually uh, doing some um, joining multiple times to the same tables to get uh, multiple iterations of the same query and say well the last exit the Execution time of the first one was greater than um, uh, 48 hours ago, and that the execution time of the next one was greater than that, and that the plan IDs are different, and that the average duration is greater than double what the average duration of the first one was. So I'm looking. I'm I'm saying okay, whether where the query ran twice as long or longer than an earlier execution of it within the last 48 hours give me all that information. Um, again, this is just my demo laptop, so let's see if we got any information in there. In this particular case, we don't. I'm just working on my demo laptop. Um, sample query I ran didn't run more than twice as long as the first one. Um, if, it was, if it had, that one would, sh would show up in here. Um, on a production system, and I've run these on a test production system where we uh, where we have processes running against them, I actually do return a lot of information. Therefore, and, and it's surprising, a lot of these things that I'm seeing um, are happening on these production systems, and nobody's even noticing. Um, so I'm I'm finding a lot of these potential issues. Um, very proactively before um, developers or our end users or anybody notices that there's an issue. So it's allowing me to identify these potential problems well before users are, are ever complaining about them. Ideally, 
it would be great for me to be able to find the things that the uh, end users will eventually complain about and fix them before they do so that I never have to hear, hear from them. And that, that, that's, that's the uh, dream. And my, my last query I'm going to show you here is queries with more than one plan in the last hour. And if that query I ran had, had generated a different plan, um, the second time I said using the same plan, um, it would show up here. Um, <coughs> but I'm, So I'm just saying, okay, where it's uh, the last compile start time uh, from sys.querystoreplan is greater than an hour ago. And I'm grouping by the query ID, so this uh, it's, it's grouping by the query itself, and then and it has a count distinct of plan ID greater than one. So same query, more than one plan ID within the last hour. And so I just query for that, see if we get any hits here. We do get one hit here. We can see the query ID 28 um, has has had two plans. And we can see what the SQL text here is, the compile time, the execution time. Um, so let's go back to the view real quick and uh, see if we can find query ID 28 on here. So let's see, track queries asked for a query ID. Let's see if we can see if it'll find query 28 for us. So we got that query. We can see, uh, wow, look at here. We, we, took that query ID from the from the plan here, entered it into the track queries, and I can see, you know, it's got two plans here. It shows you plan 29, plan 58. So there's 58. That's the, that's the higher consumer. Uh, plan 29, actually, you can see, one of the things I noticed right away is with plan 29 right here, I've got a stream aggregate. With plan 58, I've got a hatch match. So it is, it is generating a different shape plan. Uh, and SMS is crashing again. My apologies for the for the repeated SSMS crash. Um, let me come back in here to my view. So I was looking at track queries, query ID of 28. We can see that it's given us different plans here. Um, plan ID 29 is a much is appears to be a much better plan. So if I wanted to force this query to always use that plan, I could do that. And I know that next time this particular query runs, um, <clears throat> it's going to use the same plan and I would expect for it to get the same, uh, to, to have, uh, to perform better. Um, I, and I can come back in here later and look at this same query ID again and Look at, and I'll see more iterations of this as it is run, and I, and then I can say, oh, okay, so that force plan is actually, I can, I can easily see just from looking at this visual here, you can look at the graph, say, okay, the force plan is, either it is performing well consistently or it's not. If it's not, I may choose at that point to unforce it. But so after forcing it, I'll probably come in here like maybe the next day. Um, look at that to see if this is actually uh, performing well. Now, another option we have in here, so we can see from, from this view, um, we have the option to use the other tool that I wanted to talk about, the plan, the plan compare tool. So from right here, I have compare plans. Um, so, so this does require that you have two plans. Uh, so in this case, what I can do, since this has two plans, I can select, uh, let's see, 
So I need to use shift click. So I have one selected here. Hold down shift and click on the other. And I now have both of these plans selected. And I can click the compare plans. And it opens these two plans right up into the plan compare tool for me. So I'm actually going to slide this over so we can get a better look. And so, and 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 actually, the the um, this is a newer version of SSMS and what the screenshots were taken with. So the display does look a little different than what we showed on on the screen. Um, but as you can see here, I just clicked on one of the nodes and it um, synced up both copies of the plan so that um, it highlights those two nodes. And I've got over here, I've got the plan properties of both nodes. And one of the improvements they made to this with more recent versions of SSMS instead of you just having to know that the left one is the top one and the right one is bottom. It says top plan and bottom plan. And we can see right away um, and we can just do a compare to look for things that are different. Um, for example, we can see here estimated number of executions is 2.111 and here it's 1.037037. <coughs> um, we can see that the estimated cost is slightly different. The estimated rebinds is slightly different. Um, so we can see that there are some some, some things that are different here. Um, now, in many cases, you know, these won't line up very nicely and it can be hard to find uh, specific uh, things. So I'd say, now one thing we I noticed before was, you know, where we had the hash match, um, this hash match node in the top plan it had a stream aggregate node, so uh, so rather than having to try to search, okay, what matches up to that, I can you know click there, and it's actually it says okay, it's doing the stream aggregate instead of the hash match aggregate, um, so it can identify those different nodes for you to make sure that you're comparing apples to apples, and it doesn't matter if I click on the bottom or the top, it'll. Uh, sync them up for me so that I can always be comparing apples to apples. Um, very, con very, a uh, very great tool for really identifying what's different in the plans and 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 trying to figure. Out, and then once I know what's different, I can try to figure out why they're different. Um, but I and I I don't have to use this from Query Store. And actually, this tool I can use with old versions of SQL Server. So this the plan compare tool is a um, tool within SQL Server Management Studio um, and so you don't need to connect to SQL 2016 to be able to use that. You can connect to older versions of SQL Server. You can compare uh, plans that you've saved from older versions of SQL Server. You can uh, and and or any or, or um, so yeah, so it doesn't have to be just SQL Server uh, 2016. I could also, rather than using this from the Query Store GUI, if I wanted to, let's say I ran a query and I said, okay, include actual execution plan. Anytime I'm looking at an execution plan, I, I have the option to compare that plan to, to another plan. So in this case, I can just right click in an open white space area. And one of the options I have in here is compare show plan. Um, in this case, I don't have two, uh, two plans that are in SMS to point it to. So in this case, when I'm right clicking on the plan I have open and saying compare show plan, it's going to ask me to direct it to, to point it to where the plan is in the um, file system. So what I would do is if I wanted, to, if I was running two different versions of the same query, I would run the first version, right click on the plan, and so I can just right click and say save execution plan is, save that somewhere um, in the uh, file system, then do the second one, and once I have the second one up, I, I would then do the compare show plan and tell it to load the one that I had saved earlier. 
Um, now, for this example, I actually have um, a couple of query plans that I've already saved. Um, so in this case, I'm going to compare an actual query plan to a cache query plan. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up the actual plan in SQL Server Management Studio. Just drop it right up there. And we see now, normally, this is the view we're used to when looking at query plans. We've got a query plan, and we can click on nodes, and we can dive into the properties of those nodes um, over on the right here. Um, so I'm going to compare this to the other plan. So I'm going to right click in the open white space area and say compare show plan. And now I'm going to point it to where I have this store, 24 hours of pass, my session query plans. And so I see my query plans here. The actual plan is the one I already have open, so I'm going to open Query Plan 2, and it loads that up for me. Um, and when I, when I was looking at the um, plans for the query store, it had the, the basically the body of the query was in one big highlighted thing, um, so it was hard to see the color coding. But here we can see that um, because that is a, doesn't have that highlighting, um, we can see the color coding in here. Uh, we can see easily see what nodes match up uh, to each other. So we can say, okay, we can see, okay, we got pink and green and uh, all these different colors. And here's one. So we've got this <coughs> sort of a pastel green color here. I don't see that color in the top screen, so I'm going to click on that. And again, it syncs up that node. There's that, you know, that pastel green color node. And it so it, it sync, again it syncs those up for us, and it does give us um, down here you know some information about um, what the different lines and styles of lines around the boxes means. But we can see we're looking at this green one here. We can see this green um, long dotted line means clustered index scan is is this one. We can see this orange win and we can also we can sync up those plans by using this compare operation so we can we can look through here and say okay wh what's something that we want to look at okay cluster index scans maybe that's a, something we can optimize out so let's click on the clustered index scan here to switch to that um, node and it syncs both of these up there I'll do that specific node and say okay so and then I can start diving into why do I why isn't this using another index on that table that I think it should be and actually here this is actually a good good one to look at the properties of because we can see here the cost um, for the top plan is zero percent so it says okay plus an index scan this is a very cheap cost so I'm going to do a scan so it may have said okay plus an index scan in this case is is uh, was cheaper than using an index seek um, if it had to do key lookups um, in, in addition to doing the non-clustered index seek. And, but in this one, it's not so cheap. So we can see that there is a difference um, between these two um, as far as cost. We can, we can and you'll notice that uh, because I'm comparing an actual plan to, to a cash plan, that the actual plan has more information. So with the actual plan, you know, I can see the actual number of rows here. Um, this one actually did three rows. Over here, the, the cache plan, um, I don't have that actual information because it's not the the actual plan, it's the cache plan. But I can still compare, like the estimated CPU cost was um, 0 .0001603 for the top plan and estimated CPU cost was um, a little bit different, um, uh, lower um, for the cash plan. So you can identify where these differences are um, in the estimations. And if it is an actual plan, you can, not, you can as you could before, you can uh, compare what the actual results were. And so it, it really gives us, you know, a lot of, really makes it very simple for us to find um, plans that uh, identify those nodes that 
are where it's doing um, certain operations and, and trying to figure out why it's doing those. Now if I click on a node that isn't um, identified as, as being similar between the two, it won't do a sync because it doesn't know what, what exactly matches to it um, up here. Um, so because it wasn't able to, to identify those nodes, because if we look here in the top one, I've got a bunch of hash matches and I'm not seeing the merge joins. So in this case, there isn't a there isn't a merge join up here for me to 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 match it to. Um, so you're not going to be able, when the plans are different. Not everything's going to match up, but you will be able for the ones that it are that it is able to match up. You will be able to do some really great comparisons of those. So very valuable tools. So let's come back to our slide deck here. Um, so that was our demo for these two tools. They get us these great tools for performance tuning in SQL 2016, the query store, the plan compare tools. But I, in my opinion, I think they're more than just tools for performance tuning. I think it's a whole new paradigm for performance tuning. And I've provided you some, some links in the slide deck for some additional resources where you can take a look at uh, in deeper detail these particular um, tools. And so I'd like to open up for any questions we've received, Elizabeth. Hi, yes, we do have a few questions. Um, the first one is, are these features enterprise edition only? Great question. It's one of the, and there was, there was actually a couple of MVPs that had a bet going about whether um, the query store would be available in standard edition or not. And um, query plan tool is a is an SSMS tool. So it doesn't matter what version or edition you're using. You can use that with even old versions, any edition of SQL Server. Um, <coughs> query store, um, I'm very happy to say, is available in all editions of SQL Server. So neither of these tools are enterprise edition only. Okay, um, the next question is, um, I see that the tables are um, sys.query underscore store underscore query underscore text and sys.query underscore store underscore query and not sys.dm underscore asterisk which leads to the question that the query store is persistent between instant restarts, unlike the DMVs. Yes, you're, you are absolutely correct. These are um, catalog views, and in fact, I can disable, I can even dis completely disable query store, and then if I go back in and re-enable it, all that data that was collected is still there. Um, so yes, it, it is persistent. It, it doesn't. It isn't just since last restart. It, it is persistent data stored in underlying tables. Okay, and I think the last one we'll have time for is: um, Would it be possible to get copies of your query store scripts? Um, yes, and actually, I have. Um, I recently at SQL Saturday Rochester just a uh, couple of weeks ago I presented um, on this very this very same presentation at their SQL Saturday. Um, I'll post this on my website as well, SQLSoldier.com. But you can also right now you can go to the SQL Saturday website, pull up the event SQL Saturday Rochester that just happened. Um, uh, couple weeks ago and download them from there as well. I've got they're already uploaded to the SQL Saturday website there. Um, but I'll post them on my, my blog as well um, later today on SQLSoldier.com. Okay, great. Um, so that's all we have time for. Uh, Robert, if you could go to the next slide. So make sure to stay tuned for our next session, Perfect Fits for Azure SQL Database Migrations with Grant Fritchie. And next slide. 
Thank you for attending, everyone. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Pass24HOP and share your thoughts with us with the hashtag, um, hashtag 24HOP. Thank you, Robert, for a fantastic session, and thank you all for attending. Thanks, everybody.